my wife Portia, my son Ian, we're expecting our other son Mike, who's on his way. Uh, but Mike was detained, so we'll just get started. Uh, I'm glad that my family is here to join me, <clears throat> excuse me, as we officially file today with Chairman Bobby Moak our participation papers uh, in the Democratic primary for the U.S. Senate seat here in Mississippi. We, uh, we hope to win this primary and then go on in the fall to challenge Senator Smith, who I presume is going to be the candidate then. We're looking forward to that contest uh, very much, and I want to tell you why. Because Mississippi is entering a new decade, and I really want, as a native son, I want it to be a decade of promise, of promise. You know, we're reliable, we have reliable access to affordable health care, where we have rural hospitals that are financially solving and that are thriving and not closing, where people have access to prescription drugs that are reasonably priced. And then when it comes to public education, I want this decade of promise in 2020 to be one where Mississippi has the highest quality education, where teachers can really afford to teach, and where college graduates, once they graduate, they want to stay here, not go to Dallas or go to Atlanta to work or to start a family. I want to be a partner to build a new Mississippi that is really devoid of all those old stereotypes and divisive sick symbols that have divided people for too long and that has caused others to look away from the state of Mississippi. Now, if we're going to do this, we're going to need an independent senator, someone who has the experience to work across the aisles irrespective of race, irrespective of party, someone who is just has the vested interest in doing what's good for only the citizens of Mississippi, all of them. Sadly, in her brief tenure, Sinai Smith has shown us who she is, and we should believe her. She seems to be only interested in being a follower and not a leader. She seems to be only interested in following the beck and call of her party leaders. She seems to be only interested to be someone who revels and hyper-partisanship and divisive rhetoric and a follower of others who truck in the same. And I really think that Mississippi deserves better. I believe that Sidney Hyde Smith is hurting Mississippi. She's hurting our progress and she's hurting our reputation. And I really think that we deserve better. And when it comes to being a follower, I can only tell you that Kentucky already has two senators. And we don't need Kentucky to have one of ours. So it's time that Mississippi has an advocate we can be all, all be proud of, someone who can bring people together to bring good paying jobs back to Mississippi, someone who can bring quality health care to Mississippi from the Gulf Coast to Tupelo, all the way across our states. So I believe that I am that advocate because I am independent, I am experienced. I am not a follower. I've always been a leader. I don't put ideology ahead of Mississippi. I would not put party ahead of Mississippi. That's who I am. That's who I've always been. And if I'm privileged to be the next senator from Mississippi in November, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. Well, this kind of presidential election year, this race will make this race more challenging since the sitting president has endorsed Sunday Hodgson. It's always challenging. Uh, when I faced uh, her before, we had a mammoth turnout in the primary on November 27th, 900,000 voters. Uh, it's going to be, of course, a lot more than that this time because, uh, of course, it's a presidential election. But uh, some more people will come out. But those in favor of the president will come out, and those against the president will come out. So it's up to me to just persuade everyone, regardless of who they vote for at the top of the ticket, that I'm the person who they deserve to vote for as their senator. And I'm not going to leave any area of Mississippi uh, alone or vacant. We're going everywhere, northeast, Mississippi Delta, Jackson, and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And that's what I was not able to do last time. 
We only had about six months to run. And we started from a zero basis. So this time, we've got uh, more than a year because we've already started. And I think we're going to do dramatically better in this race than we did last time. Mr. Espy, with your strong showing in the last election, uh, the vulnerabilities of your opponent right now, what gives you that drive right now? What did you see in the last one that makes you see the blood in this one? I think she's wrong for Mississippi. I, I, I really do, and I said it a minute ago. She's shown us who she is. She's been there in the Senate now for a little while, and she's not a leader in the U.S. Senate. She's a follower. Everyone, everyone knows this. So, you know, Kentucky has two senators. We don't need them to borrow one of ours. So I just, I, I think she's trucks and partisan rhetoric and language, and she appreciates the language of others uh, similarly. So, you know, I, 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 we're just going to do a lot better than we did then, and uh, I am looking forward to running against her again. Your new position as Madison County Attorney has been questioned by Senator High Smith. Is that role problematic in conjunction with this race? <clears throat> well, I mean, those two are separate, and I don't want that to be an issue in this campaign. Maybe they've made it that, but I'm not going to make it that. One thing I will say is that Madison County also wanted an experienced attorney. You know, I was the attorney for Madison County before. I was in that position for four years. And most people think I did a pretty good job there. So I'm proud and uh, appreciative that they asked me uh, to come back. My job uh, in that role is a professional job. It is not a political job. My job in that role is to make sure that I can help all five supervisors, whether they're Democrat, Republican, black or white, to do, to do a better job for the constituents that they represent. So I've not been elected to that position. I'm simply a, a work person to help them do a better job for their constituents. I've done it before. I know I can do it again. It's not a, it's, it's not a political job. I, I know what the work entails. I've done that work before. And I'm going to do my best to make sure uh, that they made a wise decision. The consideration to run was based on the response you received from different communities? The consideration to run is, is multifold. Mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, is a matter of issues, and I've said those. We can do better on health care, on education. We can do better on making sure our kids remain in Mississippi and not want to go to these other places to live. Uh, the decision is to present a new Mississippi in the advent of 2020 that everyone can be proud of a Mississippi that boldly goes into the future without hateful rhetoric or divisive symbols. Uh, now, those are the issues, and there'll be many more that we'll get into in the course of this campaign. But if you want to talk about practical reasons, logistical reasons, and data-centric reasons, uh, I was very disappointed uh, on November 27th, uh, 2018, but I spent the next few months looking at the numbers. And I believe we got 46.37% of the statewide vote in Mississippi, uh, the most uh, of any Democrat in 20 or more years. And we only had six months or seven months to campaign when Senator Cochran resigned was March 11th, 2018. By the time we got a campaign up and going, it was well into the summer. And by the time we knocked on the first door, it was into the fall, and we did that well. So I think that if we have enough time, which we have now, considering having enough resources, which we have to raise, we're going to dramatically increase our numbers uh, in uh, November. 